Hello, this is Sarah at Health by Sarah. I thought it's been a long time since I've shown you a how-to video and one of the most important changes you can make when switching to a real food diet is making sure you get fermented foods in your diet like sauerkraut. So today I'm going to show you how to make sauerkraut. What I have here is a small green cabbage from my local farmers market and it was actually pretty inexpensive. It was just one dollar for this one head and we're just going to make a quart of sauerkraut today. The first thing you want to do is you want to wash it, which I have already done, and you want to remove some of the outer leaves and actually save one or two of them to put on top of your sauerkraut to make sure um, all the little leaves that we're going to cut um, are weighted down because if if they're not weighted down properly uh, you could expose the leaves to the air and they could mold so that's what we're trying to avoid next thing you want to do is cut off this little end here and you always want to make sure you have a sharp knife which I do so now we have a flat surface to work with and actually just going to cut a big chunk of it off right here. Uh, I didn't quite cut out the core because that's what I'm going for. All right. Get a little bit of those leaves left and now we're just left with the core. So I'm going to discard that. You can put that in your compost. And now I'm simply just going to chop it, um, shredding it. You could also use your food processor, which I have used in the past, but I find when I'm just doing a small head like this that it's pretty easy to just cut it with a sharp knife and it doesn't take very much time. One of the benefits of eating sauerkraut is it's one of the most um, inexpensive ways to add probiotics into your diet. Probiotics are great for nourishing your gut or your microbiome. A lot of times if you buy a good quality probiotic, they can be quite expensive. So if you're just trying to make small changes into your life, this is a, a great way to do it by adding sauerkraut into your diet. So we just want to cut it as if we were making a cabbage salad, uh, like coleslaw or something. So uh, that's about the consistency that we would want for the sauerkraut. All right, almost done. Just a tip about making sure you're cutting properly. You want to. Um, cup your hand as if you were holding a baseball um, and that way if you're cutting you're not going to cut off your fingers. Just one little part left. Now as I, as I said before you can use your food processor which I've done in the past but I guess one thing that I hate about using my food processor is having to wash it so I would just rather wash the cutting board later, especially if I'm using it several times. All right, now we have everything cut. Another thing you want to do is get everything ready at once, um, which is called mise en place in, in French, meaning you have all your ingredients and all of your equipment ready so you can make everything pretty smooth when you're cooking. All right, so I have a big bowl here and I'm just gonna toss the cabbage right into it. And actually, I've heard that cabbage is a pretty low spray crop, so they actually don't use um, many pesticides, if any, on them. Whenever they've done testing, they have found almost nothing on it, so um, if you can't afford organic cabbage, it's okay to get non-organic if your budget can't handle it. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, you have two options here. 
Currently, I am dairy-free because of my daughter. She has a dairy intolerance, and I'm trying to heal that. So, um, one option when you're making ferments is to add salt and then a little bit of whey from uh, yogurt or kefir, or you could even do it from clabbered raw milk. Um, but since I am dairy-free, as I said, I'm just going to add extra salt, and that is a great way of protecting your ferments from any pathogenic bacteria. So just add extra salt. And since we're making a quart, uh, I'm going to add two tablespoons of salt. I'm just gonna sprinkle it right over the salt. That's one tablespoon here. And this is Himalayan pink salt. That's another important thing when sourcing your ingredients is to make sure you have a healthy salt like Himalayan pink salt, Redmond real salt, Celtic sea salt or any kind of good quality sea salt especially and you would also want to add any of your extra ingredients at this time um, one classic way to make it is with caraway seeds so you could add like a couple teaspoons of it I don't have very much left in here so I'm just gonna add the rest which is about a teaspoon I usually add to that like to add maybe one or two more teaspoons but that's all I have at the moment so then you just want to get your hands in there and mash it up with your hands and it doesn't take very long for the, the salt to start working and releasing the juices from sauerkraut. That's the thing about cabbage is it has a ton of water in it. And so that's what we're trying to do is just release the water. A faster way to do that, um, if you really need it done immediately, is with one of these wooden mallets here. i um, sell those online. Or I love using my uh, mortar and pestle. Um, I guess this would be called the mortar, right? I, I don't know if that's correct or not but basically um, you can start pounding it and that's gonna pound the juices out of the cabbage and that would you would do that for maybe five to ten minutes to have enough um, but as I said my favorite way is just using my hands you only have to do that for like a minute or two and then you could just simply weigh a plate on top. I'm gonna to show you. A small dinner plate um, because my bowl is not big enough. And let me show you. You would just put it right on top of the cabbage and you could even like put something else on top to make sure it's really weighed down like a mason jar. And when we're done, we're just, um, when the cabbage has released enough juices, we're going to put it directly into this mason jar here. And we'll come back for that. We're back now. It's been a couple hours since I last filmed. And I've had this mason jar on top of the plate the whole time, waiting down the cabbage. And it looks like a lot of the juices have released in here. Um, let me give you a look. It's pretty moist now. And so I think it's ready to go into our mason jar now. And so it's just as simple as scooping it right into the jar. to leave about a, an inch of space at the top but since I'm gonna be pounding this down a little bit more all right so we have pretty much everything we need and remember that leaf 
the outer leaf you saved earlier, that would be the this would be the time to put it on. Except first, we want to pour some of that juice in so that we'll have enough to cover the leaves. I'm gonna pound it down a little bit more. So remember I was talking about salt versus whey and using extra salt earlier. So if you were to use less salt, uh, for example, if you were making a quart like I am, you would want to use one tablespoon of whey and one tablespoon of salt for one quart. And since I'm not using whey, I'm using two tablespoons of sea salt or Himalayan salt or some other healthy salt. And now I'm gonna put my leaf on top. That's essentially gonna act as my weight. Pressing it down, making sure it's covered by the liquid because again, you don't want it to be exposed to air and have mold destroy your filament to cover. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit more on top, just make sure it's completely covered. And you want to seal it tightly. I believe this is actually on backwards. Yes, it was. All right, so you're sealing it. Um, or if you have a regular screw top mason jar, that's what you wanna add. You wouldn't want to um, put just the towel over it, you actually need it to be sealed and leave it on the counter for three days. You could leave it longer than that if you wanted. Um, keep in mind, um, after you finish doing it on the countertop, put it into the refrigerator. And even in the refrigerator, it will continue fermentation. This is Sarah from Health by Sarah. And I hope you found this video helpful on how to make sauerkraut and if you have any questions please uh, let me know in the comments.